Shalom, Israel. Grand Rising. It's so, Sunday here on the West Coast. Be getting out of here on a flight back to uh, Texas. Came out here for uh, had a business proposition. Everything going well. All praise to the Most High. I came out here to. Uh, how can I say it, man? These blessings is amazing. Anyway, I came out here to pick up a new truck. And uh, it was out here on the West Coast, but the guy who was in the truck currently uh, wrecked it. So I ended up staying here for a couple of days and uh, getting paid. And uh, now I'm going to be flying back to Texas and picking up a, a, a rig out there. And then uh, getting back to the road. All praise to the Most High. Keep sharing with y'all about these blessings and what it means by the Most High in these uh, end times right now. He's commanding us to come back to his laws and commandments, his original covenant, the children of Israel, and uh, complying with his understanding, getting it. The curses are removed from you. As long as you're in compliance, you'll see it in your walk, your experience, your protection on this earth in these current times. You're going to witness all the hell going down around us, but you are protected. So, what I do when I share with y'all, I give you stuff that you can't refute as an understanding. You can verify it from history what you witnessed with your own eyes and ears, that's a testimony. So, uh, what I'm gonna share with y'all right now is, uh, let me see. close this door for a little bit more privacy. What I'm gonna share with y'all is proof that even people like Minister Farrakhan, who is following a religion, a man-made religion, Islam, which Islam is a religion which Ishmael, the forefathers, progenitors of uh, Islam, the Arabs, plagiarized the original testament and gave you the Quran. The Quran is nothing but the Old Testament. They know who they are. And I'm going to share with y'all in this, uh, this sharing here. Proof of that, as you see and hear out of Farrakhan's mouth himself and a Muslim, uh, Arabic, uh, Iman, or what you want to call it. Just getting myself together, seeing what I'm aware as I get out of here. My flight leaving about three hours. Man, these blessings is amazing. And, uh, Definitely something I wouldn't ever turn away from, this experience. Seeing the God that creates and destroys everything, his power, and feeling it, the protection, the blessings. So let me get into it. Let me go on and get into this so y'all can see what's going on. Let y'all see a little of the view again today. This is an Airbnb. They got it really set up really nice, man. Uh, let's see. Let's try to get the focus. Uh, that's an alleyway or something like that. Those are, that's an alley over here to the left. And then to the right, that's a street. Nice location, man. Nice, beautiful weather, too. Now, what you about to witness here, like I said, in the end times, Farrakhan is coming to his senses, identifying 
that he know who the children of Israel is. The Most High God told Abraham who our forefathers are of the Semitic bloodline, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Isaac had an older brother, Ishmael, the Arabs, who was passed over the blessing of Abraham to his younger brother, Isaac, the progenitor of the Israelites, who Isaac's son is Jacob, were the seeds of Jacob. He's going to share with you. Now, don't, don't get it twisted. This is some snake-ass shit of Farrakhan because he's going to tell our people, but he's not going to tell them. You're going to hear it, how he worded. But if you know who we are, you know exactly what he's saying. Listen to exactly what he's saying. Genesis, we get lots of pictures of God 
and his promise. Look at how this happens. In the 15th chapter of Genesis, God is talking to Abram. And he says to Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and shall afflict them 400 years. But after that time, God is speaking. I will come and I will judge that nation which they shall serve and afterwards shall they come out with great substance and go to their fathers in peace and be buried in a good old age. Now the Jewish people claim that this is talking about them. But other than the Bible, there is no historical record of anybody named Jews in bondage in Egypt for 400 years. I remember when Menachem Begin was talking with Anwar Sadat of Egypt. And he talked about how his people were in Egypt and had built the pyramids. <laughs> and uh, I know I didn't say Cronkite. I know who I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for trying to help me. But in that instant, I didn't need it. But stay around. I might need it a little later on. <laughs> I never mentioned who was doing the interview because it's irrelevant. The fact is that Anwar Sadat said to Menachem Begin, we have no history of nothing like that in our history. That was a hint that Begin was trying to put something over on Sadat because there was a peace agreement. And you always have to think now that when you have peaceful relations, you have to keep your eyes open for the king that may be put over on you by a smart, crooked deceiver. Now, there's no historical record of their suffering in bondage like that now they were freed from a bondage all right but that was in the hills and cave sides of Europe this as the honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us and you can go find it for yourself yes sir these people have no legitimate connection to that land. They didn't come into existence in the Holy Land. They came into existence as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that Allah taught him. On the island of Pilon. Or as it is written in the book of Revelation, Patmos. They came back to the Holy Land yes, after 600 years of grafting them from black into white. You that study biology, you so-called college students. <laughs> this is a, almost a damn robbery to make you for an education that you can't use. The education has been factored and put before the world. It is inferior teaching. 
that leaves you still with it in an this brother uh, doing some extra stuff right here. So I'm going to chop this up and get to the point. He's doing some preaching right now. And um, I'm not following him as he's still honoring. That's what he's going to do. He's going to honor Elijah Muhammad and their God, Allah. And then transition in the truth. This is what got us into this captivity, following other gods, religions. Christianity, Catholicism, Islam. So let me speed it up. Um, I don't know if you was following that, what he was saying and everything. Uh, he was mixing up the gibberish, but what he was basically showing you was that the Jewish people are not the Jews. They're not the original Jews. And if you've seen the previous videos, uh, just prior to this one, even the uh, white folks, the Edomites that was identifying us as the Israelites, the Negroes, the Latinos, the, the Native Indians. They clearly showed you that this is a, a identity, identif identity theft with, with the Jewish people, which Jewish means a suffix. It means like, not it. Greenish, reddish, bluish, not it. Jewish. So I'm going to speed this up and get to the point who the children of Israel are. So, how did uh, they have any connection to the Holy Land? You see, after they came back to Arabia, which is the Holy Land, after the process was completed, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that within six months, yes, sir. they had turned the Holy Land upside down because they were taught a system of tricks and lies that would divide the family. And it caused us to fight and kill one another because of the falsehoods that have been put between us. This is 6,000 years ago. Now let's see if it's practiced today. I was in Iraq. I visited Shiite and Muslim uh, Sunni mosques. I visited Christian churches. I didn't visit the synagogue, but they were there. Visited Christian churches. I didn't visit the synagogue, but they were there. And nobody was bothering the next person. You never read about bombing of a mosque bombing of a church until after who got there that's right that's right, that's right. That's right. talk to me if it didn't happen under Saddam Hussein and he was the tyrant what happened now that there's killing between Shiite and Sunni an enemy came in among you. They love to keep us at war with each other. But the architecture of white supremacy is to be exposed and destroyed. Moses had a hard job. To civilize the Caucasian from the hills and cave sides of Europe. He did have another assignment after he got them up in Egypt, but not with them. You know, our lessons teach us that we rounded up all that we could find. 
paying attention this is where the cooking starts right here it's about to get turned up you see a lot of stuff he was saying there's truth in it but it's truth of uh, man's understanding meaning he's still he mixing religion in here everything is about the most high God of Israel that creates everything he's hanging on to this idol of Allah so I'm, I'm, I'm injecting this understanding or this uh, narration right now so you can follow and understand. Just because he's bringing forth some truth, pay attention to where he's mixing things up. He's speaking on Israel, Israelites, but not identifying them. But I'm going to clear all that up because I'm going to have a Muslim brother come in and let you know that he knows who Farrakhan is. Farrakhan's an Israelite. He's not an Ishmaelite. Muslims are Ishmaelites from the seeds of Ishmael. Our older brother of Isaac. Our forefathers are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So get that understanding as you watch him uh, Tell some truth, but add in some confusion. And I don't understand why he's adding the confusion, but as long as you know what's going on. There were no white people in Palestine. When I was in Palestine, or what you call Israel today, as a guest yeah. of our Hebrew Israelite brothers in Demona. Some of their scholars took me to Jerusalem, and we went down to Jericho, and I saw a man riding on a donkey. He was very, very black. I could not speak his language, 
But our Hebrew Israelite brothers spoke to him in Hebrew. And I asked the brother, ask him, how long has he been here on this land? He said, as far back as he can remember, he and his fathers and their fathers before them, they've always been on that land. Saudi Arabia, Saudi comes from the word Aswad which means black Arabia how did it get white Egypt cradle of civilization southern Egypt is where Cairo is Northern Egypt is south because it follows the Nile River which starts in Uganda and flows north so everything at the north end of it is called uh, that's called Upper Egypt now look All of that was black. You go to Egypt, and some of you have been there. In that majestic desert, you see the Sphinx. You see a lion's body and the head of a black man on a lion's body. And he was about to go into some of that... uh... Egyptian tology or uh, witchcraft stuff, identifying it as a uh, a practice of ours and our forefathers. That's why I chopped that off because that isn't of the Most High's creation. That's stuff that we did in ignorance, following other deities and gods. So it's no need to even get no understanding of that. Let me get it to the point where he going into the children of Israel. So when race mixing began, all the light-skinned ones, <laughs> you know how it began here, don't you? All us light-skinned ones. And then when you take the light one and he hates black and he marries another light one, then you get lighter ones. And before you know it, the lighter ones look nearly white. And then they tell you they better than the black ones out of which all of them came. Now, if you're not teaching this in school, if you're not showing black people that they are the mother and the father of every human being on the earth, of every race on the earth, of every kindred, every tongue, and every nation, not teaching this then you're following the line of white supremacy and keeping your children ignorant that they can be used as a tool and a slave by the architects of white supremacy well if they didn't do 400 years in Egypt Could it be that this was prophetic, symbolic picture of a future people who would be the seed of Abraham? Teach it, teach it. Now, Jewish people claim Abraham. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I have to tell you the masquerade is over. Now listen, huh? Uh, this is not this is not Jew Jew bashing. No sir. No sir. I don't have nothing in my heart against the Jewish people, and I'll tell you in a minute why I admire them. But I have to tell the truth. Tell it. Tell it, dear minister. Tell it. Look. If 
they didn't suffer this, who did? Come on, man, son. If God said to Abraham, look, man, I'm going to bless you. Now think about this. I'm going to bless you. Look to the north. Look to the south. Look to the east. Look to the west. I'm going to give it all to you. That you can hold it forever. Oh, yeah. Boy, that's heavy stuff. And look at what he said to Abraham. If you can count the stars. So great will be the multiplication of the seed of Abraham. If you can count the dust, you'll be able to count the multiplication of your seed. Go ahead, minister. Well, from what I'm reading, Pat Buchanan said tell it, tell it. that the West is dying. Because the white race is not able to produce babies. And I just read something last week that the demographers in America are saying that by next year, possibly, the blacks and Hispanic babies will outnumber the birth of white children. Now, what you'll be able to count multiplication of your seed. Go ahead, minister. Well, from what I'm reading, that the West is dying because the white race is not able to produce babies. And I just read something last week that the demographers in America are saying that by next year, possibly, the blacks and Hispanic babies will outnumber the birth of white children. Now, wait, 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 wait. Don't clap. Think. Just think with me. All right. Let me go ahead. That means that if this dearth of white babies, one child born, one white person dies. So you have an older and older generation of white people and a smaller young people, group of young people. The exact opposite is with us. So the wise demographers are saying, if this continues, by... 2030, 2040, 2050, the whites will be the minority and the black and the brown will be the majority in America. I didn't say that. They are writing this. What do you think they are thinking? <clears throat> if they see you multiplying to the point where you will outnumber them, Why is there so much black on black killing? Why are they promoting birth control? Not for white people, but for you and Hispanic people, Native Americans. Why are they scientifically rendering you unable to produce <clears throat> the walls of your uterus now? so weak that you can't hold a child so it's constant breakdown of miscarriage mm. you are living in the valley of the shadow of death and if you don't understand if you don't know how to save yourself under the plan of God for your salvation. You'll go down with the enemy as he goes down. Now I want to look like the, you in the wrong place. No, wait, wait, wait. You know, when a man talks like this, yeah. you start thinking about what you might lose.
problems tomorrow. <laughs> the friends that's going to call you and ask you, was you there? I heard you spoke. <laughs> but you can tell them I didn't know what that man was going to say. <laughs> but you can also tell them he's proving his point. <laughs> and I'll tell you what you can tell them. You can get this book tonight. <laughs> and when your friends start questioning you, say, would you read this? <laughs> And this will be like showing a vampire the cross <laughs> or throwing holy water on a vampire. See, because the worst thing that a deceiver wants is for the people deceived to find the truth. Like I said, this truth going to be spoke. We could deny it all we want. Who we are, our God, his power, to no benefit. As he said, you seeing it. Let's let Ishmael himself. They clearly know who they are. Let them tell you. And they clearly know who we are. So there's no need to be following a lesser God of another understanding. Allah hasn't created, nor has Jesus created or destroyed anything. They're religions. When I look at the story of Ishmael, I see that Ishmael is given a very prominent place in the Quran and a not so prominent place in the Bible. You know, so, so tell me about Ishmael, how he's viewed in the two traditions. Yeah, in in the Quran, Ishmael is not mentioned by name so often. The, the son of Abraham, Abraham is mentioned, and uh, Ishmael is uh, thought to be the son that is mentioned in the story of the sacrifice. Elsewhere, he is mentioned by by, by name. For mm-hmm. example, in the nineteenth chapter of the Quran, uh, where God uh, shows that he was a righteous person, and God um, gave him prayer and, and charity, and he commanded his uh, progeny to do the same. Um, in, in the Bible, uh, the stories are told more extensively about all of the prophets, and the Quran only needs to refer to these stories elusively uh, uh-huh. to bring out the lessons uh, that could be brought up from these stories following the Quranic line of thought. Um, uh, but even in the Bible, um, the story of Ishmael, compared with others around him, um, uh, seems to be diminished, um, especially in comparison with his brother Isaac which is uh, a, a curious phenomenon because uh, Ishmael was the firstborn son of Abraham, according to the biblical narrative itself. And, and so you would expect him to have a greater prominence, but he doesn't. The prominence shifts to Isaac, who um, comes to be known as the ancestor of the Israelite nation. And um, uh, Ishmael, by, by comparison, is said to be a great person and that he will, be, uh, he will have many descendants. Um, uh, but he will also be a wild donkey of a man whose hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand will be against him. Mm-hmm. And in contrast, in the Quran, Ishmael is uh, Ishmael in the, in the Islamic tradition is seen as sort of the uh, ascent, the ancestor, right? The ancestor of the Prophet Muhammad and yes. the Muslims. Yeah, yes. the Arabs. So in Islamic tradition, Ishmael gets a uh, large mention. Yes. And uh, Isaac, not so much mm-hmm. mentioned. So it's as if the, the Islamic tradition, in a way, counterbalances and, and uh, fits nicely in with uh, the Jew- Judeo-Christian tradition, um, uh, showing the, 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 the prominence that both sons should have. Mm-hmm. Now, should it have. seems as if Ishmael's story within the Quran begins with um, Abraham leaving, leaving them in some sort of barren land, which appears to be Mecca. Right? Yes, in the 14th chapter of the Quran, Abraham prays and says, God, I have settled my descendants in a land uh, that is not cultivated, uh, so please you provide uh, for them and uh, uh, cause the, the hearts of people to be inclined towards them. Uh, but he says he's leaving them there for a purpose so that uh, they would worship God. It's as if uh, there is an attempt here to um, plant a new 
place of worship. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm using a terminology here from Christian um, thinking in, in that, you know, somebody may say, I'm planting a new church. Mm-hmm. You go they go to a new area where there's no church, and then they, by their very presence there, they're going to be estab- they're going to establish a Christian community. So that's what Abraham wants to do. Church, yes. Mm-hmm. So Abraham was planting his descendants uh, in a barren uh, region where people would not have come otherwise, uh, mm-hmm. so that in that area, uh, God can be worshipped as well. Mm-hmm. How does that story in, um, appear in the Bible? Uh, in, in the Bible, it takes on a different coloring in that uh, it, it, the, 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 the story goes that uh, Ishmael was born for us first, and when he was uh, about uh, 13 years old, um, Sarah became pregnant and gave birth uh, to um, Isaac. Isaac. So Isaac was the second son. When Isaac was being weaned, probably he was about two years old, um, uh, Ishmael was uh, uh, laughing at him or playing with him. Uh, the term Yetzchak in, in Hebrew is ambiguous. It could mean either way. Um, if it's taken to be mocking him, then this is more likely to explain uh, Sarah's uh, behavior because Sarah uh, then um, it says, drive out this slave woman and her son. I won't allow her son to inherit along with my son. Um, and it's in response to this that Abraham then takes his uh, wife and uh, Hagar and and uh, her, her son, and, and leaves them in the barren um, area. And in fact, it is said that God told Abraham, listen to your wife, mm. uh, which uh, in a way it's a good commandment, listen to your wife. But in this specific uh, um, circumstance, uh, one struggles to see the morality of it. Like mm-hmm. how would it be a right to leave this woman and her child um, with only a, a small supply of water, which eventually will, will run out. Mm-hmm. It seems like they would be destined to die in that situation. Yeah. It, it, would, it would seem so, had it not been for miraculous in- intervention and God sending an angel to uh, make the gift the provision. Mm-hmm. In so Islamic in tradition. the Islamic tradition, there's the, there's a zamzam that arises, right? Yes. The water. Is, is that in the Bible as well? Uh, yes, okay. uh, it's in the Bible. And um, in the Islamic tradition, the well is referred to as zamzam, and that well continues to uh, provide water to this day. Pilgrims from all over the world they gather to Mecca and uh, they perform the sacred rites at uh, the what is called the Masjid al-Haram, uh, which is a mosque around the Kaaba. If you clearly not seeing that these people know who God's chosen children of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel are, look at who are being targeted with um, abortions, I just went to Tijuana for the first time. And let me tell you, Tijuana is a ghetto. I don't know a group of white folks that live like this, uh, Arabs that live like this. These are the children of Israel. These people all know who the children of Israel are. As a people, they know who we are. The elites most definitely know who they are. And as you can tell, a lot of them are bitter, the religious fractions of them, because just listening to this dude's uh, understanding and his uh, bringing forth of information, it's all in his body language, man, bitter. The Quran is nothing but the Old Testament, the original Testament, the covenant that was given to Abraham's son, Isaac, which he gave to his son, Jacob. It never went to Ishmael. Ishmael right here knows who he is. Fatawi, his collection of uh, of Islamic verdicts. Uh, so taking the son to be Ishmael, that, that, that has become the majority view. And it makes uh, good sense, uh, especially when we see the wording in Genesis chapter 22, verse 1, where it says, take your son, your only son. Because the only time there was an only son is when Ishmael was the only son uh-huh. uh, for, for some 14 years. Uh, and then uh, Isaac was born. Now we, Abraham had two sons. So one might say, well, only son Isaac could mean that uh, Abraham has banished the other uh-huh. son. And this, uh, theoretically, there's only one son. That's but the what Bible, he did. Uh, does confirm that Ishmael 
was still the son of Abraham, uh, and that's how the Bible refers to him, not uh, as a you know as someone of lower status than a son. Um, so he was the only son. Uh -huh. Now, it is interesting that uh, in the biblical narrative, uh, Abraham says to the son, we're going to offer a burnt uh, offering. And the son says, but dad, where is the animal that we're going to sacrifice? And uh, Abraham is a little bit uh, um, evasive in answering the son. Uh, in, in the Quran, the story is from the start that Abraham sees uh, a dream that he's sacrificing his son. And then he says to his son, I see this dream. You tell me, what do you think about, about this? And then the son says, Ya abati falmatu mar satajiruna insha'Allah mina sabirin. So in the 37th chapter of, in, of the Quran, where uh, the son says, My, my father, uh, do what uh, you uh, are uh, commanded and, and you will find me God willing to be one of those who are patient uh -huh. so the son uh, in the Quranic narrative knew, the, knew what was going to happen and he wanted to be part of that and he was deliberately allowing himself to be sacrificed uh, in this way it's a very uh, moving account in it, it, it is, it yeah. is. And, and it shows the communication that should uh, take place between father and son especially when we're about to do something for God um, we want to all do it together as a family, everyone in cooperation. If you can't see that for yourself, man, like I said, we can deny, I ain't gonna say we, anybody can deny that there's a real God. There's only one God. Everybody's narrative, plagiarized books and everything reverts back to that original God. It's not Jesus, it's not Allah. Both of them are playing Batman and Robin with the Most High, which he t clearly told Moses, his only child is Israel. So his child isn't uh, Ishmael, Mohammed, Allah, Jesus, Yahweh Shai. It's only one God, the God I am, the Most High God that creates and destroys. So if you can't identify with who you are from all the information being shared and forth and get yourself out of the way, this is the season to get out of the way. I don't know what to tell you. Well, yeah, I do know what to tell you. This is your kingdom and it's as good as it gets. And you see how bad it's getting. I mean, this leaves no room even for a uh, so-called atheist. You clearly see the people living in these conditions. We didn't collectively come together and settle upon not benefiting. As if we never tried to pull ourselves up from our bootstraps. The Most High God power in His Word and His punishment, His curses, everything is real. Can't, can't out maneuver it. Can't. Obadiah's up next for those who might have perpetual hatred and that's dedicated to them. Like I said, ye who blesses Israel shall be blessed. Ye who curse Israel shall be cursed. All praise to the Most High, the God of Israel. Y'all stay blessed and focus. Shalom.